And um, we got a super from Unknown Character 14 who says, Do you think the reaction of BlizzCon Line was one of the reasons why we're not getting a traditional one this year? I would say no. I would no. say no. Uh, like, BlizzCon Line didn't have the most stuff to show. Though from what I understand, yeah. the Overwatch people were pretty happy. Yes, they were. Um, from from the WoW side, yeah, I think it was there was an obvious casualty there. Um, overall, I would say no. I think the reason why there's no BlizzCon this year is just they did some things with BlizzCon Line, and it probably it's just a little too soon yeah. to do a full physical BlizzCon, and also that like planning and logistics is probably still quite challenging. And sort of thing. Maybe if you can't do it ideally, and you don't, you know, you wouldn't even have a massive amount to show off anyway. Yeah. Does it make sense to bother? No, do it twenty twenty two instead. Sort of makes sense. Yep. And I actually think that the reaction to BlizzCon Line is, uh, a po I think that they probably had it work out for them really well, and that's why they're happy to go with the BlizzCon Line with small and gatherings next year. So yeah. I actually think it's almost the opposite of what the question implies. Okay. But I think it's actually they were like, I that'll do. Yeah. That'll do, we'll have it. And we got Difficult. two supers from Stuart Gross. Uh, one of them, time skip, 200 years in the future, clean slate. Tell you what, uh, I like the idea of there being a time mm. skip to reset the world, but it, if it was 200 years, it would totally break our characters. So, yeah. you know, if there's going to be a WoW 2, totally do that. Mm -hmm. uh, in my head, the ideal thing to do is, you know, WoW expansion ends, Warcraft 4 happens, new WoW expansion begins. Yeah. Let Warcraft 4 reset the, the slate. You know, maybe three, four years passing in a time... You know, maybe just we pop out of the Shadowlands yeah. a few years has passed. I mean, that's not what they're doing. I think Ian conf I mean, he literally confirmed that to me. Yep. Um, yeah, I basically, though, I agree with you in that, like, some form of clean slate would be great. Yeah. His other question, uh, well, he just said, just push the expansion back. This is about, you know, yeah. the one after Shadowlands. Uh, don't see any reason for the two-year cadence. Better to have a good story and game than stick to artificial deadlines. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, personally, I just kind of want to be away from this Covenant situation and on to the next thing soon. So Same. my bias is towards getting it done. Uh, but generically speaking, I entirely agree with you. Yeah. The, that the thing to do is... You know, if this is an expansion that really its narrative and all of its promise demands this amount of patches, yeah. let's do that amount of patches instead of just yeah. saying, we'll fill two years, go on to the next one. So, yeah. yeah. They just need to they just need to do that in a, an expansion that doesn't have a bunch of adversarial systems that yes. players aren't happy with. Like, That's why I don't want it to happen in Shadow yeah, Lands. Give us, give us all friendliness, but for real this time. Give us... A, <laughs> don't arbitrarily lock off abilities and stuff based on choices. Don't, don't make it kind of suck to think about and then develop like crazy and build on that but i mean if you build if you build on top of a uh, bad foundation the whole thing will fall over so yeah yeah um, um unknown character 14 mm -hmm. saying next expansion of wow will go the oh, pokemon geez. and have two versions where you have to buy two to get the full experience ho ho ah uh, yes oh, i don't you know i don't think blizzard are quite that bad but man the shit people at the Pokemon company get away with. Uh, did you did you watch the gameplay for Legends Arceus? No. Oh my god. To be fair, it was very or very early in development, but the, the entire area is barren. The frame rate in the official gameplay was dropping to like five in open world, and then they just went and announced. I think they announced a double pack for a Brilliant Diamond and Shining uh, Pearl. Yeah. And you're like, excuse me, Pokemon company. Those are the same game. So Why are you selling a double pack? There's a con there's a concept called anchoring yeah. uh, when it comes to like influence and debate mm -hmm. or not debates like you know, but price anchoring, right? Mm -hmm. You generally will be in yep. a more advantageous position in a negotiation if you open up with a price because then you have anchored the ballpark of pricing yeah. with Pokemon. They very quickly <laughs> learned to do this bullshit double dipping thing. Mm -hmm. And because they actually anchored their franchise in that, people then came to accept it. In the yeah. same way that Hearthstone being pay to win or FIFA Ultimate Team being pay to win, uh, that that is accepted by some people because it is fundamentally anchored in people's expectations from physical trading cards. Yeah. Even though, in the case of Hearthstone, it's a collectible card game, not a trading card game. That's a big difference. It certainly is. So, yeah, that's fun. We've got from uh, Chile Mang who says, uh, In the future, let's say Anduin does not make it out of Shadowlands and Turalyon is left as king. Does he start a fourth war? I think it'll be a fifth war because the be fourth war, war is the yeah. one we're just out of. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep, I think he would. That, definitely. Yeah, because he's, he's a big zealot. Yeah, he's a big zealot. 
Big angry, angry self, dude. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, you know, we think of Trillian as always such. He's, a, he's our man. He's a good boy. You know, he has been for the Alliance in the past. But him and Illyria as the friggin' torturing duo, mm. uh, where there's a bit in the in the latest novel where. <laughs> Uh, Illyria tortures uh, information out of somebody using Void, while Turalyon, like, you know, is is using Light aggressively against. Mm -hmm. So they are just going totally overblown with their Void and Light powers to, like, get info via torture. Uh, And I think in a situation where they probably could have just asked (laughs) uh, if if memory serves, or, like, where it felt, I think Madeline Rue, the author, I think she, like, portrayed it as, like, the two of them did go a little overboard. Um, so, like, with that character reference and that Matthias Shaw, who, um, you know, he's got an interest in peace via, you know, sneaky means, but yep. he's not pleased about Turalyon being the regent. Yeah. And if he's not pleased, and, you know, he's somebody who's thinking about long-term strategy and statecraft, perhaps, mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, maybe we should think, oh, Matthias, he's been our boy for a long time. Mm-hmm. Maybe this Turalyon fella might have, uh, maybe, you know, he, the light might have an influence on him, and maybe the light is not always good, which Blizzard have been trying, uh, no, they, they have been telling us for years now. So, here's another yes. fun thing that I don't know if, I really feel like this is a massive problem with sort of uh, how Blizzard can kind of throw things out and then not really capitalize on them, but here's a, here's a fun thought experiment. Imagine someone who's been at war for a thousand years. And then you come back and you go, all right, there is currently no war. What do you, like, Trials will be sitting there and been like, what, the, what do I do in my time? If you're a hammer, things are going to look like nails. Yeah, he'd be like, right, well, who do I kill now? Like, yeah. the, no Trillion, no killing. <laughs> we're, we're, we don't need to. He's like, but but that's all I know. That's all we know. Yeah. Where's where's the purple things and the green things? So I kill them. Green things? Cross the water? Right, boys, on a boat. <laughs> like... Could be, and I mean, <laughs> Turalyon obviously has a lot of personal experience of the orcs. Yeah. And the, you know, this is not all you've seen in World of Warcraft, but in Warcraft 2. Mm-hmm. Turalyon's got big, big, you know, personals with the orcs. So, yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of interesting stuff there. And I think mm-hmm. if the next expansion takes us back to Azeroth and explores all that, I'll be happy. Absolutely. I think so. Uh, Debbie Wells. Mm-hmm. Personally, as someone who started playing at Vanilla's launch, I would support them pulling a TBC and having 10.0 uh be in 2023 of course pulling a tbc is referencing delaying an expansion from like a q4 release date to a q1 release date the following year uh and yeah she says it would give uh the game and the devs time to breathe 100 percent. it's it's that sort of thing like do we want a perpetual scramble Mm. to catch up with all of this or should we just sort of accept yeah timings haven't went right nobody's happy about this uh but we have to deal with it. It just means this is going to be late. Better late than, uh, you know, better late than never. And it's also better, you know, late and good than on perfect time for the business. Yeah. Not as good. So yeah, I mean, what's that? What's that? Uh, I believe horrendously uh, misappropriated, mo- appropriated quote from oh, the, the Shigeru Miyamoto quote where he yeah. never said, which is, you know, a delayed game is, uh, good, but oh, I can't even remember what it is. Yeah, it's, it's a, like a delayed game is good, good eventually. Yeah, versus bad forever. Yeah, yeah, that's like bad forever. Yeah, I will one hundred percent support Blizzard doing delays. Yeah, one hundred percent. I just wish it came with a bit more honesty and openness. So, yeah. as an example, if Blizzard had have just done, you know, done a little instead of pretending that yeah. BlizzCon Line is going to give us big hype about the new <laughs> patch, you know what? Get Ian has a Costas. Sit him down, put a camera in his face, and just have Ian explain, hey, everyone, I've got an update for you. This is not as great news as I would have loved and that we and the team would have loved. We're working super hard. Unfortunately, with COVID and everything, we are behind. And, you know, we had to make this decision. Do we cut a few features to get this out in time? Or do we, you know, take another two or three months and get you the patch you guys deserve? We took the, you know, the decision to delay it that's we think it's for the best of the game yeah. and i truly believe that if if that like if if, if he said that mm-hmm. i think most players would rally behind him you would get a bunch of dickheads who would be angry at that yeah. like you know all those no man's sky delayed suddenly death threats <laughs> those dickheads exist but you know don't pay any attention to them because they don't yeah. matter they're irrelevant Definitely. um so yeah you know I, I would like more of that i just think 
if they were a little bit more communicative early on, just to help people yeah. set expectations. Because if you set people's expectations early on, they're going to be less disappointed yeah. if some bad news has to happen. Bad news is just a fact of life. So, uh, you know, I'm okay with... I'm okay with it happening. Yeah. It's just talk to us a little more. Yeah, and it's just, it's about that communication where I don't think, I even think saying like, because of COVID and stuff, I actually think you would need to just come and say, we really, we like, we really need to delay this because you're clearly not happy with what we're doing. Oh, we're, I, we're, we're, standing we're, yeah, ovation. Yeah, we're, we're going to try to fix that. We like, will see you in four months time. Yeah, if, if I just saw a post from them that said, hey, everybody, look, here's the deal. We've done a lot of thinking. We've realized loads of years you don't like this content energy thing. Yep. You, is, you is don't like some of how Soulbinds works. And you know what? A, you know, a bunch of your criticisms are founded. Mm. Uh, instead of stick with it until the next expansion reset, we are going to take some more time, but this will be delayed. Yep. I would be... I mean, even if even if that was not something where the change was going in the direction of what I would have wanted, yeah. I'd still like... I, I'd support the openness and the honesty and... You know, doing the meaningful thing, not the expedient thing. And I think the problem that the Blizz devs probably face is they kind of have to do the expedient thing because ultimately their boss is money. Yeah. Because it kind of, you know, a big company like that, it does end up being that yeah. way. Um, which, you know, must suck for them as creatives because, oh, definitely. you know, why do you get into game development? Because you're creatively interested. So whenever, you know, times and dates and finances and all that get in the way, you're obviously going to be unhappy. Yeah, I bet I bet every time every time they hear a date that's like mandated or pushed around from up top, they're just everyone's in their office going, Oh for fuck's sake. <sighs> yeah, yeah, because they they know what's up. Yeah. And that, that that includes that includes John Height, like that includes Ian. That that's everyone I imagine yeah. going, Oh right. Well, better better or get to it. Batten down the hatches. Yep. <laughs>